the GS1 identification key is used to identify trade items. A global trade item number, GTIN, is one of the main building blocks of the GS1 system and is used to uniquely identify trade items. A GTIN does not contain any information about the item being identified. It provides a key to access information and data from computer files or databases. The information and data may be used to support a wide range of business processes, such as inventory management, automatic reordering, sales analysis, or simply to register a sale. Why should you use a GTIN? 95% of products you find on your supermarket shelf contain a GTIN. It is a global standard used for unique identification of products. It allows companies to trade goods and services knowing that the identification will be compatible. It facilitates accurate scanning at checkout, for example at retail outlets, warehouses or hospitals. It is essential for accurate stock control and order replenishment. It drives electronic communication systems like EDI across trading partners, providing accuracy, speed and efficiency for business. We have seen why a GTIN should be used. Let's now see a case study to help us understand its practical applications. The founders of Mami Jamias had a family recipe of fruit preserves, which they were selling at the local market in Cheshire. Within six weeks, they sold more than 600 jars, establishing Mami Jamias as a recognized and trusted brand at the market. They wanted to scale up volume as demand grew and secured an opportunity to pitch to a buyer at Sainsbury's head office in London. But the packaging was not ready for commercial sale and they were asked to redo the labels. They located GS1 UK online and became a member. The initial membership gave them 1,000 global trade item numbers. Mami Jamias used the GTIN to generate a retail-ready barcode which was added to their product packaging design. The service team at GS1 UK also advised them on packaging requirements and regulations needed to trade with supermarkets. Today, Mami Jamia's preserves are available in hundreds of supermarkets. In a typical retail transaction, when a barcode symbol is scanned at the point of sale or POS terminal, a GTIN represented by that barcode is located in the database. The data required for this purchase, specifically the price of the item, is accessed and reported back to the POS where it is added to the consumer's bill. At the same time, the number of items purchased reduces the quantity of stock field in the product record. GTINs are used in all areas of modern business. They provide a quick way to identify an item which can then be looked up in a database to get a price, record a sale, confirm a delivery or to identify an order. The industry sectors where GTINs are commonly used are shown on your screen. Who assigns a GTIN? GTINs are assigned at source by the brand owner. The company or organization that makes product available to the market is responsible for assigning the GTIN. 
Each organization that wishes to assign a GTIN does so using their GS1 company prefix, together with an item number and a GS1 check digit. An organization is given a GS1 company prefix upon joining a GS1 member organization. In the GS1 system, it is recommended that GTINs are stored in a 14-digit reference field in the database to accommodate all GTIN data structures. If a GTIN contains less than 14 digits, the database adds leading zeros in front of the GTIN to fill the 14-digit field. So, how do companies allocate the item number? Companies keep the same company prefix with different item reference numbers, which lead to the check digit being recalculated. It is a best practice to allocate numbers to the products or services in a sequential manner, starting from zero and working your way up. The two fundamental rules for a GTIN allocation are one product equals one GTIN and one GTIN equals one product. A GTIN allocated to a trade item that has become obsolete must not be reused for another trade item until at least 48 months have elapsed after the expiration date of the last original trade items produced or supplied to the customer with that number. Before we move on to the next topic on rules for allocating a GTIN, let's take a look at the most common reasons for assigning a new GTIN. A new GTIN will always be created for a new product. A GTIN never changes but will have to be replaced whenever there is a change, which requires a declaration to the trading partners. For example, a major modification of an existing product or a new version of a product introduced to the market in parallel with the old version. GTINs provide the global supply chain solution for the identification of any item that is traded, priced, ordered, invoiced. The full list of GTIN allocation rules is part of the GS1 general specifications.
These rules are based on the principle of minimizing GTIN changes whenever possible. A change to a GTIN for the trade item at a lower level of packaging will always lead to a change of the GTIN used for associated packaging at higher grouping levels. In groupings of same retail item containing different quantities, the GTIN of the contained item does not change. Instead, each grouping has a new GTIN. If a new GTIN is allocated, the brand owner should inform all trading partners of the change as soon as possible before the product is supplied. Let's recap. In this course we have learned that the Global Trade Item Number or GTIN is a globally unique number that is used to uniquely identify a product or service. GTINs are used in all areas of modern business. There are four ways to construct a GTIN. GTIN 14, GTIN 13, GTIN 12, and GTIN 8. Sequential allocation of item reference numbers is a best practice. Two fundamental rules for GTIN allocation are one product equals one GTIN, and one GTIN equals one product. A new GTIN will always be created for a new product. Changes in an existing product may impact its GTIN allocation.